you are welcome to another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. I suppose everyone following the R. Kelly case knows something about Michael Avenatti, the controversial attorney who represented two of R. Kelly's accusers, and that is Geronda Pace, along with Azriel Clary's parents, before he was sent off to prison for his own crimes against one of his clients, and also against the company Nike. According to reports, Michael Avenatti had been defrauding one of his clients, taking money from her account illegally, exploiting her vulnerability, and receiving compensations on her behalf which he never delivered to her, making him a perpetual fraud star. He is also accused of attempting to extort Nike, when he was recorded negotiating for a lucrative consulting agreement worth millions of dollars in exchange for not going public about the company allegedly corruptly paying armature players and their families. Avenatti is also famous from the R. Kelly case where he claimed to have custody of the controversial tape, that was later declared missing and never presented at trial. There is just so much to this guy than a normal human being can be, all exposed in such a short time. But the summary of it all is he is a confirmed fraudster and extortionist. It turns out that during one of his overambitious phone calls with Nike officials, he had no idea he was being recorded, and said so many things that saw him openly incriminate himself. Avenatti's situation was not any different from that of a thief who goes out to burglarize a house in the darkness of night, but begins by awakening the homeowner to help him feed in the code to his safe. But most importantly, during this same phone call, Avenatti did make a shocking comment about the case against R. Kelly, which if we had a serious court system would have seen all charges for Geronda Pace and Azriel Clary's parents dropped. The attorney who is now very famous for all the wrong reasons was recorded on tape describing to Nike how he can easily lie on them and it works, just like he did against R. Kelly. In his own words, Avenatti said, the case against R. Kelly is 90% BS, it doesn't matter is it was true or not. And this is on his case transcript with Nike. I guess the only statement he forgot to add there was look, we have succeeded in ruining him with no real facts and evidence. This was Geronda Pace's attorney busy bragging about ruining R. Kelly's name over BS claims, and that it didn't matter whether allegations are true or false, if he is out to run you down, you will go down. And he goes ahead to shamelessly defend himself suggesting this was simply a negotiating tactic against Nike. So when it's time to extort R. Kelly, he regards the case against Nike BS, and when he is conning Nike, he conveniently degrades the case against R. Kelly to BS. I guess the English linguists are yet to find a word for this kind of person that will change color like a chameleon, and tell lies whenever it's convenient. How is Avenatti still a practicing law with a valid license? And what's shocking the most is the fact that the clients he represented on these BS charges against R. Kelly still managed to secure a guilty verdict on the criminal charges they filed. How is this even possible that a strong confession like this can exist? and the court still managed to find R. Kelly guilty for the same very charges, and place his client in queue for restitutions. Just how much proof does the system need to see in order to realize that the entire case against R. Kelly is just another falsehood? Meanwhile, with all the crimes Avenatti committed and managed to get caught, and with all the overwhelming evidence, the courts only managed to secure him a two and a half year sentence. This is way below the mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years for a federal conviction for fraud. The sentence he was given is for misdemeanor convictions and not federal charges. Also amazing to note is the fact that the sentences from the other cases have been issued to be served concurrently, leaving his maximum stay in the coolers at only two and a half years. Shorter than what a chicken thief in the third world would get. Another great point to note from this Avenatti Nike indictment and subsequent verdict is how government and their judiciary counterparts have chosen to play double standards, by ruling against Avenatti for attempting to scheme from Nike, but not for his similar attempts on R. Kelly, matters to which he confessed at the same time and using the very same words. If Nike is not paying Avenatti, and instead has him in jail for making these statements, why should R. Kelly be paying restitutions to his clients who are also equally implicated by his statement? It makes it so clear that unlike Nike, R. Kelly is paying his own offenders. 
while many will ask why R. Kelly's previous legal team did not bring up this recorded confession of lies against Nike and R. Kelly as perfect evidence to have him acquitted for the charges his clients had placed against him. What about the role of the justice system to follow the same set standards in their judicial processes? If Nike managed to win their case against Avenatti, and Kelly is instead made to pay restitutions for another case he similarly called BS, why would we doubt claims by observers that R. Kelly was only determined guilty because of his race? It would be nice for the court to explain to us why the sudden discrepancy in how the two cases were handled. It's more like same evidence, different verdict. Both cases involve the very same person attempting to extort the other party. His conviction is confirmation of his behavior and habits. What would stop him from teaming up with R. Kelly's accusers to extort him and share the spoils? I guess nothing would. This man will stop at nothing to make a few millions and so did his clients. According to Jane D. At first I thought Kim Fox had acted alone when she brought charges against R. Kelly following the surviving R. Kelly docuseries, but it turns out Michael Avenatti was walking with her all along, secretly meeting with the grand jury and forcing in all kinds of accusations. The poor man probably knew what was coming from his Nike and client indictments was not going to be easy and was simply planning ahead. Something like, extort Kelly and pay Nike by using lying accusers against R. Kelly. Considering the company now seeks 856,000 US dollars in reduced restitution from the disgraced lawyer. According to Elham, only in America. I was unaware Michael Avenatti was discussing R. Kelly in court and on media with an ankle monitor on his leg. So all along he had a mountain of his own legal issues to deal with, and here he was chasing after the R&B king and hoping to make a killing off him. Very shameless. According to Maurice Grant. I cannot believe Kim Fox would allow to work with such criminals in a sort of partnership and this goes unnoticed. No wonder many say she is responsible for the increased crime and violence rate in Chicago, considering she will team up with criminals and convicted felons to chase after innocent and successful black men. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.